Hi again then guys and welcome to episode 19 of B-Road Ballers, the review series for Gran Turismo selection of hot hatches, old and new. And in this episode we're featuring my personal favourite hot hatch in the game by far. And also pretty much my favourite hot hatch in real life as well. Although technically speaking, my favourite version of this car isn't actually featured on the game which is the R26 version. This version, however, is still a brilliant car. I absolutely love driving it. It's one of my go-to cars on Gran Turismo for fun, for cruising, and for hot hatch racing. It's a car which has some support, and the people who do use it tend to really, really like it. But more people tend to use the Clio than this car. This is of course the Megane RS, the 2008 shape Megane. Most people, as I said, tend to go for the Clio RS or the newer version of the Megane, which are fairly obvious choices and there's nothing wrong with those cars, both of which will be featured in this series in the future. For now though, we're considering the 2008 model. So, for a hot hatch, what does it have to offer? Because in real life, of course, it's a, a really, really strongly selling model a very respected performance car. So, what's it like on the game? Well, it's got a 2.0-litre turbocharged engine, it's front-wheel drive, and to be honest, despite being a five-door body style, which adds a little bit of length to its wheelbase, it still handles itself extremely well. It's also one of the thumpiest hot hatches. It's got very high torque, very high power for the hot hatch category. It's not exactly HPA golf level, of course, but for a mainstream hot hatch, it's very strong. And overall, it's probably pretty much the main rival for the Ford Focus RS, primarily the newer shape RS, which unfortunately isn't on the game yet, but it's one of those cars that I strongly feel will be included on Gran Turismo eventually. Possibly even the newer all-wheel drive model. I personally prefer the slightly older RS, but still. Now this car produces just under 500 horsepower, it's actually 493, and a fraction under 400 pound-feet of torque, so it's got a very strong engine. The weight isn't outstandingly low, for a couple of reasons. One, it's a five-door body style with genuine space and kit for a full family. It's also certainly not a small hot hatch, it is one of the larger hot hatches in the game. And it weighs in at 1147 kilos, so it's certainly not heavy, but it's not setting any records for lightweight driving. It does put out, however, a very impressive 430 horsepower per tonne, thanks to the very high power output. And the PP is also pretty high on this model at 542, which is very high for a hot hatch. One of the highest, in fact. Now the price is just over 40 grand, and I would say it's pretty much perfectly priced actually. It's a premium model, so you get the fully detailed interior, and considering what it's capable of, 40 grand, or just over, is perfect. It's fantastic value for the car, and especially for a model which is not severely underappreciated, but a little bit underappreciated compared to the more obvious choices of the Clio and the newer Megane. The main reason why I personally prefer this model is, especially compared to the newer Megane, I would say I prefer the look, and that's the main thing for me personally, but also it feels it feels more raw than the newer model. The newer model is certainly more powerful, has a higher top speed, but it feels a bit too soft, a bit too comfortable, a bit too watered down, whereas the Megane of this generation is a performance legend. The R26R, of course, being the ultimate model, held the Nuremberg Ring hot hatch record for quite a while, and it's a widely loved car for a reason. It's good, just like the Ford Focus RS is just as popular, if not more so, for those exact same reasons. It actually delivers the performance that the looks indicate that it has. And in the case of this car, actually more so. Top speed wise, you're looking at around 215 without NOS, which is pretty good. Not the fastest of the hot hatch category, but more than enough for most tracks. The handling has a little bit more weight to it than some other hot hatches, 
but that's not too surprising considering that it is larger and a slightly more heavy car overall than many other front wheel drive hot hatches. The handling overall though is very, very good. There is a colossal amount of grip. It's almost impossible to, to lose control in this car. It's fantastic for cornering ability, for track ability. And that's not surprising. Renault is known for their hot hatches. They've been making them for years and they've been hugely popular and very well respected for that for years. Overall then, if you haven't tried the Megane of this generation and you're into hot hatches, I'd definitely try it out because it's a pretty good alternative. Well, it's an excellent alternative to the more obvious choices of the newer Megane. The Clio as well. It's not quite as quick overall as the Clio. The Clio has a weight advantage over it and a slight power advantage. But if you like something that's different from the obvious choice, something which not so many people use, then this is a great alternative that you'll probably like to drive. So, that's it for this episode. I'll see you guys next time. And as always, thanks for watching. Thank you.